Hi, howdy. Howdy, Mikowski. Thank you so much for talking to me. <clears throat> One of the things that <coughs> I got something going on with me uh, since yesterday, but I'll get over it. <laughs> um, one of the things that for me has been particularly challenging is listening to a lot of people online and not being part of the conversation. And yep. I, I feel like it's more important that we share where we are right now. And uh, so I'm very, I, I'm honored that you would allow me to interview you. <laughs> so, Thanks. Uh -huh. I, I, I can through you pretend I'm in Mexico and not in the middle of the snow. So that's oh, good. I guess, although it was three degrees this morning here, which was cold for us. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so what I, I said before we started recording is that I have a little cafe, so I have a lot of contact with people on the ground, people that come in, we have a lot of discussions, we question a lot of things, and your work has come up several times. And so what I found for a while was there was confusion there. Like, where, are, well, what, wait, 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 this is a simulation. I, I, how do I get out of it? I want to get out. Right, and so that becomes a big overriding question. Well, and my my answer to them is, okay, where do you want to go? Right, you you want out of this particular mm -hmm. thing, but do you have any idea or sense in self of what that means? And I think a lot of people are just still running. It's heavy duty going here on the planet. I know that. So I'm just curious with you right now, uh, where you are in that aspect of it. Because you say something that I used to say a lot, I want to go home. I just want to go home. So my question to you would be, where's home? Um, well, that brought up to kind of... I don't know if you can hear me, but you, right. you froze. Just, just, yeah, and just so you know, you froze. Oh no, you're back now. Okay. Yeah, I'm back um, <laughs> so there's, there's, yeah. So you've got two pieces to that that particular question. We can start with the second one first, I think, which is, do you need to specifically know where you're going? Uh, not necessarily. I'll give you an example. That's the robots in Westworld. So the robots in Westworld, Westworld is such a really good analogy for where we are when we realize the robots are us, right? Mm -hmm. And when when Dolores and Maeve, in a sense, realize or remember their previous incarnations in Westworld, um, realize the number of times they've been memory wiped, the number of times they've been killed and raped and mistreated, and and they finally realize, okay, I know what this reality is, and I I, I know what Westworld is, and I want out of Westworld. Mm -hmm. Now, Maeve and Dolores don't know what's outside of Westworld. They have no idea what's beyond the gates. And so all they know is they don't want to be in Westworld anymore. So probably a lot of people who are having these discussions or, you know, in your cafe are maybe in that state. They're like, okay, I'm done with this. I don't know what's through the doors, but I'll take my chances. So that's, so that, that's kind of step one is you don't maybe necessarily need to know exactly what's on the other side yet. It's just knowing what you're no longer going to want to accept, if that makes sense. Um, because as long as we're still tied to this reality in some way, as long as we're still tied to this realm, we're not going to, we're not going to disengage, I don't think, because that's the second part of the question. Well, what does leaving mean? And it's a very challenging question because normally if you look up leaving the matrix or something like that, it'll always discuss, it'll always be discussed in a manner of how to make life here better how to improve your life, how to make things easier, how to, you know, it's not very few have realized that it means if you're actually exiting Plato's cave, you're exiting all of reality. You're leaving it behind. You can't, you're not trying to fix it. You're trying to leave it. Mm -hmm. And you're just, you're using your time here in a sense to, uh, how to say this, uh, prepare yourself as much as possible for uh, your moment of exit. So 
to simplify, and then I'll let you ask some questions and talk. I would say one, you're you're having to recognize that this is not where you want to be, and it's not it's not home. A lot of people will say that, you know, they, they travel, they go to different places, they live in different places, but they've never, ever felt home. And that's part of a reason. This is not home. Uh, you know, this is not where our soul, you might say, is, is, is or, or our divine spark, I should say, the right word, originates. So we know this is not a home for us. So we have this, this issue first. The second is, well, what is this potential doorway that we would have to go through to no longer be in the simulation and then what's on the other side of the doorway so there's three kind of specific pieces to that is mm -hmm. is turning your back here knowing this isn't home what does it what does a doorway of exit look like what's on the other side of the doorway yeah well i mean i can i can easily see that most people are trapped in a mechanical reality right it's they're just in a reactionary state of being right oh my god this is going on over here and how do i react to that and so we're constantly being uh pulled outward like the whole matrix to me it's all set up to keep us from knowing ourselves it's a distraction and so and the ego for me is deeply tied to this and so i don't know where you come in on that um because of the experiences I've had in my life that were literally shattering, like several shattering, uh, what I found during that process, and I didn't think I would survive. And when I was going through mm -hmm. it, I thought, nobody can survive this. This is too hard. It's too hard. And yet I did survive it. And that comes up to the divine spark, right? So <clears throat> there was a time... All I had was this little tiny light in me. That's all I had left. Everything was taken. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't need to tell my whole story, but I literally had nothing. And so during this ego shattering process was just like tuning into my design stark, right? This light within me became my guide, if I will. It became... Um, the very thing of who I am in this matrix. And so the other part of my question to you is, can we exit the matrix? I mean, is that really, can we exit this realm or can we uh, ascend? Or I don't like a lot of the words they throw out in new age stuff, but can we have a higher consciousness? Can we get out of our ego long enough? Can we look at everything without having a reaction to it? And what does that bring us within ourselves? Yeah, so I just, I make notes as we go along. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Or I forget. Cool. Um, yeah, um, yeah, an ego shattering experience is never what people think it is. They They label it other things, but that was a pretty good description. It's taking away everything that you think of is you mm -hmm. because the ego is everything everything we can label anytime we can label something no matter what it is that's that's a false that's a false piece of ourself and that's really so ego has so many layers it's not just it's not just a material right it's not just it's not just my mental it's etheric it's astral it's 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 layers upon layers upon layers it's massive and so that was an interesting description of if it's truly ego shattering in a sense, you've dropped everything that's false. What's left that's not false, um, and and seeing it as like a fire or or something within that's very that's very ancient mythological description of it, right? The mm -hmm. the um, the stealing, you know, it's the the whole story of Prometheus stealing Prometheus. fire from the gods is all yeah. about this movement of the divine spark into material realm, right? So I just wanted to wanted to make that clear for everybody that that's that's kind of what it's like, and you do feel like you won't survive it because, in a sense, you don't. All of those things that you thought of are you are getting burned in some way. They they reform again, and depending how well you go through the the after process and the integration of it, indicates how um, how much you're holding on to that other stuff after if you don't integrate it well you, you hold on to a lot more if you integrate it well you just you're just lightly touching these things but you never you don't get fooled into thinking they're you so i'm sharing that with with people because my own experience mirrors a lot of what you said there 
Mm-hmm. Um, from the standpoint of of you know, it's so at least, and these are all just my opinions, right? As everybody who probably has come and they've 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 seen me before, they know who I am. But I always like to say these are always my opinions or my thesis. I don't know for sure. I don't know the, the the totality of everything. I'm just sharing my experiences and and my 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 research of the thesis. But to me, it seems like now the um, it's not so much we're, like, this idea of raising consciousness or 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 raising frequencies or those all those are all things that more again have value potentially in this reality. Those are all things that can. Um, make us navigate a little bit better here can heal things a little bit better which are all have value right if, if the if the physical form we're borrowing is, is not doing well we, we want to improve that but exiting the matrix now seems like we're leaving the cave is about literally remembering that's the best word i can say it's it's a it's a remembering yeah. well, this and, is the... And, and the remembering yeah, yeah, and that that's a very challenging word because if I even look up, I think I have a dictionary here uh, remember, somewhere. Which, remember to put yourself back together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, remembering. So, for example, because it because it's 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 a word that can be taken so many different ways, and I just want to see what the dictionary because I haven't looked in the dictionary on this word. So let's see what remembering. So remember in the dictionary says remember one call back to mind the memory of okay. Uh, have, keep in mind, okay, make a present to, um, convey greetings. So the last ones don't really count, but we have call back to mind the memory of. And so this is, so there, there's two parts of remember, and there's one that's not, that's not being listed here. It's, it's a member being a part or a piece. Yeah. So to remember is to put pieces back together. So I think we're, I think we're, what's what really has to occur is a couple of levels. One is a bringing together of parts that are currently separated, if that makes sense, that are not that are not currently in in a whole. So it's almost that you can see that there's the divine spark is fragmented. That's a clue. I'm not going to give you the, the total total what that means for everybody, but it's it's fragmented. So it's a, it remembering is a refragmentation, and then it's also it's also, as it says here, it's to keep in mind. So when we're keeping something in mind, we are not, we are remembering it. It's, it's, it's always, it's always in our focus. Um, somebody probably has this for a while after, uh, say, after someone close to them has just died. They, they don't, you don't stop thinking of them. They're always in your mind. They're always, they're right here. You are remembering them because they're constantly in your mind. It doesn't mean if you stop there's up here you've forgotten them per se but it means you're not remembering so remembering from the standpoint of leaving the matrix is first of all knowing that there is an outside of the matrix that there is an outside of it and that we obviously know what that is but we have forgotten so it's this two piece it's two parts it's bringing pieces together and it's um it's this idea of not allowing that memory or that nostalgia that's another good word that richard rose liked to use so often he talked about the three main uh, three main uh emotions which were fear seduction and nostalgia and he said fear and seduction are basically just there to drag drag you into the ground nostalgia looks like it's there to drag you in the ground but really it's your force it's your way home because nostalgia you think you're remembering, you know, something at that time when you were five and this wonderful place you had in these experiences, but it's really a clue of going much, much deeper. So remembering is also a type of nostalgia for something you don't even, you can only feel, you don't know, you can't tangibly see what uh, home really is, but you can feel it. My word for that. So you're, you're belonging. trying to hold that, you're trying to hold that feeling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my word for that is a longing. Like a lot of us have a longing. We know there's something that we don't have in this right. world right now. And so we we long for it, right? And I also wanted to touch on remembering with you because I have a, a yeah. lot of it, like you said, keep it up in your mind, right? The way I've gone through mm-hmm. my life, um, what I would say is that the development of my observer self, like that is the observer of me watching me in contact with the world. And the, and the more I have that 
constantly present with me. It's very interesting because you catch yourself in little things, right? So, and it's neutral. It doesn't judge. It's very, very neutral, the observer. So for me, my, my journey, my remembering came through my body, not through my mind. And so, um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I didn't, yeah, I'm, I'm just listening. Okay. So what, you know, perhaps this is the male-female aspect of how we are in the world, but I guess you could call it a resonance of membranes. Like my bones know, my bone marrow knows. And I've had lots and lots of past life memories. And they weren't really so much as me processing it in my mind. It came through me in vivid dreams, in the second attention of walking in this reality. All of a sudden, everything in me shifted. And I was in some past life, which have all taught me how to, to uh, like, we're never like what we think we're living in right here, right now, it's multi, I mean, it, it's all, it's everything. It's going on all the time. And that's why I question like, I mean, we're kind of stuck with certain words like the matrix. Uh, we're stuck with certain things like the simulation. Um, so for me, it's more of a, embracing, if I can say it that way, of the all that moves through me in my life. And I agree with you. We don't know where we're going. I agree with that because I have lots of conversations. Nobody really knows what the next manifestation of this realm, because I still think we're in a realm and I don't know if we're getting out of a realm. I think we're getting out of part of it, which is <clears throat> the uh, the mechanistic materialistic world. So does that make sense? Yeah, the so the, the observer is uh, on one level, it's it's an important part of the puzzle it's also one of the traps um, that a lot of people don't see how how the observer is actually a trap as well, which is interesting. Uh, I don't, I, of course, I don't talk about this at all and exit the cave. That's all in falling for truth. So I was, mm -hmm. I was very focused on this on the observer and was very focused on um, because it was one of the things that came after my canyon experience as well. Was the was this a very clear rational realization of the best thing I could call me is just a, an awareness, an observer. And, and it's just, it's constantly viewing. It's constantly, it's constantly, yeah, just taking in um, data, like you say, completely uh, non-judgmentally. Like it's not labeling anything. It's literally just absorbing it. Um, and that's, that is an important part of the process. The, the, the challenge is that is a pro part of the process that's kind of become uh, marketed really, really strongly as the only thing you have to do. And for quite a long time, the Advaita satsang circuit, people made a lot of money pumping this idea of observer, 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 awareness, 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 mindfulness, mindfulness, mindfulness. They made a ton of money from it. But, and, and people kind of felt a bit better. They felt a bit more clearly about themselves. But then if you ask them these questions, okay, well, what's reality? I don't know. Well, where are you? Where, is there a way to leave reality? I don't know. So, you know, there's so it it only takes you so far because to me, it's even the observer is not the true us. This is this is the part that took me a long time to really understand. What I always thought of as oh, that's got to be the truest me is still a matrix part of myself. Granted, as far back as we can go on the bridge point between like what you might call true totality of ourself and all the things of the egoic structure. It's like the bridge between ego and out. So I would say that once someone's in the observer, if you can actually get to the observer state, which is 
a lot of work. Like that's, you either have to get lucky. Some people get lucky and it just, it just happens, right? They're just walking down the street one day and it just happens. Others have to do a ton of work to break away enough stuff to hit that observer point. The next trick is once you get used to the observer, I think, is to be able to see, okay, kind of like treat it like it's, I'm trying to show up. Kind of like you're on a razor thin, like uh, like you're on a razor's edge then. And and then instead of then, you can stay in the observer. That's observer doesn't go. So that's, that's the, that's how I would kind of lay it out as this. Um, and that reminds me of the, of what was going on so often. I talked about this a few times of the, the false doors in Egypt. And I, I found similar things in Mexico and similar things all over the world. But this idea was for anyone who doesn't, who don't, doesn't know these stories, the, a lot of the Egyptian, particularly with what they call tombs or not tombs, of course, they became tombs, but they were something else originally have these, uh, but they're called false doors, kind of like uh, in ingrained um, uh, carving into the into the rock face that look like a door. And when I would stand facing the door, I would just I would just look at it. It was fine, but I got urges to to stand backwards to it. And as soon as I put my back to the door, there was like a magnetic pull, really really hard. And I had to fight myself actually to not get pulled. And finally, I started saying, "Let's see what happens. I'm just going to let myself fall." And I would literally just let go, and I boom. and in the moment just before I hit the wall, I would blank out. I, I would actually I would black out. Mm -hmm. gone and then i'd hit my you know, my back would hit the wall and I'd, I'd wake up again right i kind of jolted awake and it's that it's it's obviously indicating that there's to me that there was a specific i don't call it ritual to do there because i hate that word but there's a there's a specific preparation to do before you get ready for being pulled into the false door or these other things that are similar around the world that it might be what I'm talking about, this falling off the razor's edge, where you literally just, you drop into this place, even where the observer doesn't go. And um, so I, I just wanted to bring that up for people, because it's it's easy to think that you hit the observer, you're done. And it's like, you've hit the observer, the new journey is beginning. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah for me, the observer, me, the I observer, is more like eye awareness, right? So it's not data that I'm I'm looking at, right? If I could describe it any better, it's like the ener the unseen energies in any encounter. So I'm not pulling in data like mind data. I'm just aware. And I agree. I don't think that. And like you said, and this is what happens so often in our world is. People jump on these things, right? And they make a lot of money and they, you know, so I've never taken that path. I've never felt called to work with anybody. It's been a pretty much solo journey, me and me and my, me and me. <laughs> but um, so now where for you, Howdy, does God come into this? We're freezing. <laughs> I'm sorry, my internet's so crappy. She's got a my my internet. bandwidth. Yeah, it's. Oh, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm just getting. No, it's it's not you. It's your it's the uh, internet bandwidth yeah, there. I know. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if you heard my question. Is like nope. where in this does God come in for you? Whether you call it the divine spark, the eternal flame, what is this? Because when we look at creation, right, we look at a simulation. Is there a God creation? Is there something so beautiful and profound here too? And that we've been no. like, you don't think so? Yeah, and that's there is something. There is something. To, yeah, there is something total. But that word that is translated it gets presented as this thing, God, G O D, or any of these other things that people want to generally label it, usually refers to yeah, the creator of this realm. And the creator of this realm, to me, is like the Gnostics call it the the demiurge, the Rex Mundi, yeah. um, the fallen fallen force, and what might be called total to the not this totality to the. Yeah. 
So you're talking about the material realm when we're talking about the demiurge and the archons and all of that. That's talking about everything. That's etheric realm, astral realm, angel realm, super duper realm. If there's oh. if there's if there's any kind of possible duality, any kind of possible of awareness, any kind of possible observation, that's all a type of material realm, material being visible and invisible. Right. That's mm -hmm. all from the demiurge. Okay, so right. I've done a lot of reading on the Gnostic front and a lot of the Gnostic texts, and especially over the last several months. So when I get deep into the Gnosticism, right, and when you get into the Apothecary of John or the Secret Book of John, which details out exactly how this physical realm was created, but I feel like I have a relationship to creator. And I do see joy and I do see beauty. And I can I I I can't take that out of my equation. That well, it's nice, but you have to ask, but you have to ask, just like when someone sees darkness and and awfulness, energy's going somewhere. Okay, where is that energy going? When you see, when you choose to see beauty and love and joy, where is that energy going? I'm not telling anybody what to believe. Right. I'm asking to start seeing that the way you have been, the way we have been taught about this, the, and again, not the material realm. The material realm is actually insignificant as to what we're dealing with. It's all of these other layers, layers upon layers, like a giant pancake of where is this energy going? Because, you know, as I've come to say, this realm is created only for one thing, that is to farm energy from all the things that are in it, specifically us. We are the number one uh, farming energy source. And so it's something people don't like to hear. They like to, they're comfortable when you say, yeah, they're demonic beings and they're going to eat your energy if you have fear and all these other awful emotions and you're negative. Oh yeah. Well, who's eating the positive emotions? The energy is going somewhere. And this is a question we forget. And <clears throat> playing this little game, right? Like, again, the sheep gets sick. So the farmer realizes, oh, my sheep is ill. I need to get a veterinarian to come fix it. And of course, the sheep is praying for help. It's it's in, it's in sick. And all of a sudden, it, the farmer comes by, pats him on the head. The veterinarian comes by, fixes the sheep. The sheep, the farmer is wonderful. This has been the greatest thing in the world. But the farmer really only cares about the sheep to a certain level from the fact that he knows he's going to sell the sheep in three weeks to the slaughterhouse and he's going to get the 100 or 200 dollars that they're going to get for selling the sheep to the slaughter and we forget that there's <clears throat> what we are classifying as soon as we classify evil and good that's in duality they're oh, they're, they're in duality yeah now there, there's something beyond that there's truth there's truth but truth will be so uh, insignificant from the standpoint of emotion. So that's, it's again, it's just something for me to throw out to people. I'm not saying you have, no, I will have to believe me or easily, agree with me. Easily agree with you. This is the trap that we have of emotion, which kind of gets into the moon, right? It's this emotional feeding of the moon, right? And I just happen to have like my own experiences so I can share them a little bit. Um, but if we, what you're talking about, right, is where does this energy go? What if, where does this energy go? What if at the very center of our being, if we could locate our being, that if this energy is circulating back within us, like this fountain, this comes into toroidal fields, this comes into plasma. So you're not emotional about the bad shit and you're not emotional about the good stuff and can you circulate this energy back through you well step one of course is going right back to castaneda stuff which is which was the end of which is the last chapter of my book and this discussion in in active side of infinity for example of of the realization that you're being eaten, that our, our energy on all levels is being eaten. So step one is to stop being eaten. Step one is we need to we need to regain 
not not that we we need to get back our energy first. We need to stop the energy that's constantly being eaten on a daily basis. We need to we need to re-strengthen, you might say, the first the shields that we do have in order to block this from happening before we can even go to the next stages and start regaining what we lost and yeah. and, and building yeah. that. So so actually we, we always have to take it back to the earliest stages and that is okay seeing that of course don't trust me, right? Okay. Am I be is, is something eating my energy? Is something actually, you know, we we always like to think, oh I, I'm the top of the food chain. Nothing's eating me, right? But if you start saying, well something is eating me well, step one is you don't need to know all about it. You don't need to know everything about this with these beings or what all you need to know is, can I stop it? What are the things I can do to start stopping this energy loss? Because right away, that'll increase the vitality. When you increase the vitality of the body, that that then you can now, see, that's the problem. See, some will start to do that <laughs> and then they will use that energy to go get a bunch of stuff in the world, which you can do. If you add a whole bunch of extra vitality, you can go get some guy, some girl, some job, some car, some great house, some whatever. You you can that you can use it for that. But then the, the energy is just going to go sucked out somewhere else into something else. So the question is, once you can start regaining your vitality, how can we move the vitality into non-physical elements of ourself into into these into these fine layers of the body to in a sense start uh how would i describe it opening um opening like a tunnel to the doorway we had talked about earlier so we're 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 first we're first keeping that energy from being eaten and stolen and then we're rechanneling it back into what's most important to us. And we're back to where we kind of began the conversation, which is um, if you're not really sure what you're doing and you're not really sure what's important to you and you're not really sure what your number one focus of everything is, even if you start storing energy, it's just going to get wasted on something else. So you have to know what your what your true what your true direction is with everything, because then once you've got extra energy, it's like, it goes into that, it goes into that, it goes into that. And things start. Things will start actually to, to work for you uh, if you have your direction clear and you're able to put saved energy into it. That's kind of. It, I, I made it sound simple, and I don't know if I sound. It sounds like guru like, but it's <laughs> it's pretty simple. It's just no, it's, take. It just don't waste energy okay. where you've been wasting it, and put it into the focus where you want it to go. Yeah. Things happen automatically. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I know that these words, like I know a lot of people don't like the word God, and a lot of people don't. You know, and I know now where you stand, like it's a demiurge and and that created this world. But, you know, I have to, because I've had experience, okay? I've had experience that I can only describe as grace. And what it did for me was humble me. So where am I? I am, where am I? I am. And so where I find that the direction or the, what I find I'm, I'm doing in my life is just following that. Without my ego, it's hard. I get it. Most people have a really hard time with that because they're so convoluted in their mind they think they need it to be the bible and they think it they need it to be this or whatever but when you say what you said is that you collect energy and that will start moving you in the right direction right but we can also on the dark side we can harvest energy from other people we can do that it's not just the outer world we can do that and, you know, I, so many people aren't even aware that they do do that. So, you know, that's, you know, that's another thing is like, that's why I don't say it's just the matrix. It's just a simulation. We've been participating in it for a long time. We've been building it. We are so responsible in many ways for where we are. Right. So there is something that it, where you call it rectify Clarify. Well, yes and no. I mean, I mean, yes, kind of, in a sense, we we are part of the system now. The way the system is, has been run, and the way and the level of deception that humans are now under, the way humans have become to function. Um, 
but this is this was this this was set up as a prison cell for us and we were not the ones who decided i want to be in prison this why? was this was a giant why? trick and deception why 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 was it set up as a prison cell for us uh, that's a giant di di <laughs> discussion on the apocryphon of john and the layers of how the divine spark was brought in and the the weird interaction between what's outside the matrix and what's inside the matrix after it was created it, it's it's a, it's a little too long for this discussion okay, here like but simplified um simplified we we came in here mostly out of our own choice we actually we came in here for something that we thought was that we thought was we thought was going to happen or we were going to get let's just say we didn't get that we were the you know it's like when someone says come on in and you're gonna i'm gonna give you a nice i'm gonna have a nice party and a nice meal and then you come in and they give you nothing and they just lock the door and you know that's kind of what it's like so once we were in the main focus became not to let us out and they didn't the door isn't locked so it's not like they locked the door the best way to do that was to create a world that we were going to be like you said earlier so focused on so drawn into so mesmerized by and that we were going to be interacting with it's not just that we were going to be staring at the world we were going to be interacting with the world we were going to be in a sense building the world all of this was going on so we 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 didn't create the trap we just deepened it that's the best way of describing it so we helped we helped take a layer here and we've we've taken it even deeper so we 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 were complacent you know are complicit that's the word complicit yeah, yeah. in <laughs> complicit in the in the creation of the prison in the in the deepening of it but um it's one of the most important things that a, a divine spark has to see is that but it's actually not my fault because this is a big thing that that so much so many of these self help things try to place on people. It's not, it's always your fault. You didn't do enough work. You don't have enough faith. Uh, you didn't believe enough, or you're you're not good enough. You you need to purify yourself more. And once we realize, oh, actually, the matrix is not my fault. Um, I can interact with it in a way different way. I can I can do things completely different, like starting right now. But that doesn't mean I should beat myself up about how I've been up to this yeah. point because nobody gave me a manual on the day I was born to tell me, hey, here's the simulation you're in. Here's the matrix you're in. Uh, here's how it's all functioning. And uh, and here's the ways that you'll screw yourself over if you do it. So don't do that. Well, we didn't get any of that. We were just pushed into a nutcase simula simulation with from two parents who – um, really didn't know anything more about the simulation than any other two parents and just pushed us into it. So once we let go of the of uh, some guilt and some shame about our experience, we can kind of start saying, okay, but I'm here now. Mm -hmm. This is where my experience is. This is where my awareness is now. This is how I'm starting to understand my energy. What can I do about it going forward so that my focus is, is the movement going through tomorrow and I'm going to let go of I'm going to let go of yesterday. I'm going to let go of that um and and move see see where I can see where I can uh, I don't like transform either because again it makes it sound like something has to transform. It's right it's just it's uh, it's so hard with language. It's um I agree. Yeah, it's just it just yeah, it's just to see it's it's turning everything around 180 degrees. That that's uh, Mr. Park used to tell me that uh, often. The uh, Korean monk I was with, it was just just see everything the other way. Just see it backwards. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You're seeing you see everything this way. Just see it backwards, right. and it'll it'll actually make sense. Yeah, and actually, you can start to develop a 360 view if you have enough consciousness that it's like that's right. I'm not not looking forward because that does pull us into it right oh my god what's going to happen next what's going to happen to next and i did write down actually let me look at because you brought it up with oh right like we one of the things that people do is avoidance right or we put things off on other people oh they're out there doing the good thing and you know i just want to you know, hang out with my friends and go to the bar and, you know, whatever. I'm not criticizing people. It's not that. But really the the 
crux of the matter for me is we have to deal with this. It's right in front of us. It's not going away. So, you know, there is no avoidance here. <clears throat> and a lot of people are reticent to do that because they feel powerless. They feel like they don't have, you know, so what the fuck? Well, um, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I, you know, uh, you know, what, what does it matter? You know, I'll just go hang out with my, my bros and, you know, I'll keep eating too much and, you know, and that's something I see quite often. And so in keeping what we were saying earlier, we are deepening the matrix, right? We make choices. Everything we do is a choice along the way. So, and people are- Not really. <laughs> Again, well, not really. It, 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 it seems that way so we have to we have to operate from the standpoint of that's how it seems it seems like if i do x y is going to happen so if i don't want y don't do x okay that that seems like how it is but it's actually thing. not yeah but yeah that's but it's thing. actually the, the bizarre thing is it's actually not like that at all um because past and future and all these things don't actually the present doesn't actually make the future just like the future didn't come from the past so it's very bizarre we tend to think what i do now will create the future it only seems that way the future is already there we're just finding our way to get to a particular future so actually what we're doing is we're we're, we're 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 tapping into a particular possible future in the timeline which already exists and we're just calling it towards us and and um yeah the problem well, is all of those all of those futures are not really our choice something else has chosen and put all of these life scripts in place so just like in the adjustment bureau right they're just picking the uh, matt damon is picking one life script that he likes over another life script but he's not asking but who wrote the life script Mm -hmm. Did I really write this life script or or not? So if I wasn't the actual writer of the life script, no matter what it is, do I want it? And is there a possible way to live without any life scripts at all? In which case, uh, choices would, in a sense, almost not matter because there's nothing that is there's nothing dependent in the future on what you're doing now. And I'm not telling people not to think about things, not to take responsibility. Like I say, it appears that that exists. And that's that's a valuable way to go about the, your life. But at a certain point of time, you, you could reach a point where you sit back and you start asking the question, yeah, that's still a decent way to seemingly go through my life, but is it true? And once you start digging into the question of is it true, it gets very hard to prove. So again, I, I'm just I'm just throwing these ideas well, out no, for people fine, I think because because it, because it, 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 it's all about thinking. It's all about contemplating the matrix as we've as we've been told it is, or we've we've come to believe it is, or we've come to experience it, and still say, but even though I've had the experience, am I just experiencing something that's still false? It's a, it's a very weird state to get in when you start questioning that. Yeah. Well, see, that's where I'm a little different than you are, where I don't do that much analytical thinking. It doesn't really, for me, right? I, I totally understand your words, right? So when I say choice, I'm not talking about an analytical choice that I'm going to make this choice, therefore I'm going to get this thing, right? If I were to use that word from within the self, like if I am in peace, if I'm foundationally sitting in peace, then I know that everything around me will start to conform to that peace, to that good. And I don't really have to make a choice. I don't know. It's just another way of saying kind of what you're saying. Does that, does that make sense? I'm a, an experiencer. Okay. I mean, fundamentally, <clears throat> most of my life has been one experience after another. And so I have an analytical mind. I certainly can use that. Um, and that's what I got into in the last several months because I wanted to know, okay, what, what am I dealing with here from my, from the 
from the things that were being birthed through my consciousness within me, if that can make any sense, right? It's like things were starting to make sense to me from an inner journey, not from uh, books, not from other people, not from from anything like that. And so once I felt like I had got to this place and it's a foundation of peace, that's all I can describe it as. It's like my my being is seated in peace and very little at this point. And I don't even like to say it because I know I'll get challenged can move me from that peace. Therefore, it's like when I look out at the world, which is very different when you see it, is that I see great beauty. I see birds. I see the trees. I see the wind. I see, uh, you know, and I'm full. I feel like I'm full of that beauty. So I don't know what that means in anybody else's life. But I don't see it all horrible here. And I, for me, that's also one of the things within the Gnostic literature or the scripture. <clears throat> there was a whole school of Gnosticism that said this world is evil. And I don't, I just don't see it. I see a great evil. I do see a great evil. But, you know, I don't feel like the whole creation is that. And like you said earlier, there's duality, right? So for there to be evil, there has to be beauty. For there to be hatred, there has to be love. That's where I am at, Howdy. <laughs> And it's, um, yeah, I mean, I agree. We have a long road to walk. Maybe we don't. Maybe things are in action and motion right now that we don't see, that we don't know. Some days I feel that very well, strong. Let's just say, as a, this is just, and this is going out to everybody that's out there. Um, things may not look so wonderful in this world in about six months. So yeah. be prepared. Yeah, and we be all prepared. know this. Well, we do know this, and that's where I am. Yeah, but but like you, I enjoy I enjoy those moments when they are when they arise. They are, yeah. I I enjoy sitting and looking at the lake, and you know seeing when an animal comes by at the night and whatever, but uh, I know it's, I know it's as unreal as the other side too. And just one feels better and the other side doesn't feel, doesn't feel so good. And so, yeah, that's fine. It's, it's, uh, it's duality. And then there's what's beyond duality. That's the question to ask people. So what's, what's beyond even duality. So to the listeners, to question it, is there something real here? I can't answer that here for here in this realm. No, oh, and that's that's something? everybody has and everybody has to do this work and that's that's again it's the point of hearing people like me who on the surface will sound very strange and very you know very uh, heretical actually but it's not to agree with anything I say not to disagree with anything I say it's all it's all about hearing possible opinions that are totally new and then taking them taking them in for a while and just just feeling them out just sit there with it kind of play with it for a while because mm -hmm. um, it's all about the only thing that matters is what what an individual person comes to see of their inward journey that's all that matters all that matters is what you the person watching this right now comes to an understanding of potential totality and everything outside that's it's like this is just possible areas of examination. Uh, I'm just I'm just happy to provide areas of examination that most people don't ever think about. Yeah, yeah, and perhaps that's what I'm doing in my own in my own way because very few people will. And I, I want to reiterate something, and I find it very important. And 
when we don't really understand our energetics, we don't understand our energetic body, we don't know ourselves, is that we can recirculate our energy. We do not have to give it away. There is an aspect within the human which comes to the divine spark, or you could say once the eternal flame is lit, that that energy is recirculating. And so with that, you are no longer playing in the outer world. And I also, like where I'm at right now, I'm just up to here with listening to people online because all of that's become a screen for me. It's just become a screen for me. Everybody mm -hmm. talking, 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 talking. We know, like you said, Howdy, what's coming down the track. There are those of us that are getting ready. Mm -hmm. Very fortunate. I live out in the country. I live in a little town. I have good friends. But uh, it's, but we'll get through this. I don't know what's on the other side. I have no idea. I wouldn't even venture a guess. But there is something on the other side. So... I would hope that, um, you know, we can speak with some inspiration for folks and encourage people to, well, know thyself. I think the hardest, you know, with all the simulation, and everything you talk about, one of the hardest pieces of this puzzle to know is our own being. Um, well, when you know <laughs> that, you're not here anymore. Uh huh. That's what a friend has said to me at some point, you know, and, unless maybe we choose to be. There is an aspect to that, too. And I know many people would never come want to come back here, but it's neither here nor there to me right now. So, you know, that's just where I'm sitting at the moment. And like you, I'm a work in progress, and I don't know what the next, you know, moment will come and it'll bring so and isn't it true how do you, isn't it amazing that each one of us human beings i know you'll say we're the same in some ways but we're so unique that's definitely true <laughs> i mean you know it just like i look around and i'm like everybody you know, their perspective, it's unique to mine. So I definitely like sharing and I will just once again, thank you. Oh, I mean, I mean, at the divine spark level, at the at the level of, of like the deepest part, that's the uniqueness and the uniqueness is only just mirrored out in sort of the various, mm -hmm. those are various, that's just ways of seeing it kind of. But yeah, if you track it back, if you kind of go past the facade and go to what's deeper, like what's unique, how is how is your let's say divine spark what would be the word constructed slightly different than this person's divine spark or this person's that's really what you're seeing you're seeing the the difference of the construction and the other stuff is just the uh just the window of it just like mm -hmm. the 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 what do you call it the um reflections off the diamond the reflections off the um various faces of the diamond right yeah, yeah, the kaleidoscope, actually. <laughs> Sometimes it's like a kaleidoscope. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to ask me anything or say anything before we finish up. Well, so far, I think we've we've done okay. I mean, it's, again, the whole point is having these conversations so people can have an opportunity to, and in this case, you said people were a bit confused on some things I'd said, so it's an opportunity to uh, maybe clarify some things. So, Okay, so, maybe at well, least they'll know what to agree or disagree with now they won't be confused well let me bring in this is a very good friend of mine who is the one that introduced me to you because i had a big experience when i was in Rennes le chateau and i had told him about it and he told me about your your three-part series and i was majorly impressed with your research on it because i had done a lot of research myself and i was like Oh, he put all the pieces out there. It's still a mystery, but he put all the pieces out there. So I started listening to you, but he listens to you quite often. And mm -hmm. he has this question of, like, if this is all a simulation, because he's deeply empathic uh, with his pets, with his cat, right? So he was like, mm -hmm. can you ask Howdy 
if it's a simulation, where do these animals that we love and take care of, where do they come in? Are they just a simulation too? Mm -hmm. Or are they, how can this build within me? Like, you know, you know, really mm -hmm. a deep love or caring. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I consider people, there's some people who like to try to say divine sparks only exist in human form. And I disagree with that. I think they're divine sparks that are in trees, that are in rocks, that are in dogs, that are in giraffes, that are in fish, that are in everything. So the divine spark can can come into any uh, any possible physical form. Mm -hmm. Now there are lots of physical forms that what won't have a divine spark. Of course, they have a soul. Now there's there's a difference between a soul and a divine spark. A soul is like an energy energy a deeper energy conglomerate for the being, a deeper sort of the deeper sort of power source or whatnot. So we're always able to connect from, from a soul with anything, first of all, in, in the world. But there will be certain, and again, I, I can feel with certain rocks, I can tell right away that a particular rock is different than other rocks. It has a different core source to it beyond just being a rock. It's something else. And I get the sense you're dealing with a divine spark. So, um, when somebody makes a connection to, and in some ways, it's so much easier to to open ourselves to an animal, to open ourselves to the animal world, because the animal world is, if we have a thousand things we're dealing with, the animal world is dealing with five, particularly if they're, they're a house pet, they, we, we look after them, we care for them greatly, so they have a lot less things to have to deal with on a day-to-day -day <laughs> basis. Um, um, so it's very easy to make those connections to them. Um all, all I all I can suggest is as I suggest to how I might go about like with trees that I come to connect with really well. I don't know for sure a particular tree has a divine spark or doesn't, but uh, I might just leave them a little message of, you know, uh, if I get a piece of information about uh, exiting the matrix, I might mention it to the tree when I'm sitting next to it. Say, hey, by the way, if you ever think of leaving the matrix, here's a little, here's a tip for you. And uh, then I'll see if the tree has any tips for me and, and move along. I mean, that's, it's, it's, a, again, it's about what's the focus for me. It's, it's to return home. Simple as that. I'm just, I'm, I'm going home. Well, and uh, if I can leave, and if I can leave a couple of pointers to a few others out there, not just humans on all levels who might want to go home too, then that's time well spent. So my answer to your, to your friend would be, um, whatever his main goal in sort of existence is, whatever his reason for being here is, um, pass that along to your pet and see if whatever your choice might be, the pet might want to make the same choice and and um, see if the journey becomes combined. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to say something totally opposite <laughs> of what you say. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, but this is within me. It's like, not in regards to pets and trees and rocks, because I've definitely had my experiences with communion is what I call it. When you are with rocks commune, trees commune, pets commune. Uh, but it's like, what if home was here? Well, <laughs> If that's I mean, the belief, we know, do we? I will just say, enjoy the Matrix. Well, we don't really. The know. Matrix has a lot of tricks. It has a lot of deceptions, and oh, okay. um, everybody's free to make. I would never tell anyone to leave the Matrix uh -huh. if they want to. Definitely don't. This is a this is a great way to end this. This is a great like, little piece to end our thing with. But it's a it's a it's an incredible dream. It's an unbelievable dream of possibility. Don't. Don't actually leave it until you're actually ready to leave it. I mean, um, there are people that think I should leave it because I don't like something about it. Or, I mean, don't think of leaving the matrix until you know for sure you are ready to go. Otherwise, it's an endless world of possibility. So if you feel you haven't expanded all of your endless possibilities, then go do that first. Mm -hmm. Make sure you oh. make sure you've done all that. Don't. You know, my, leave, my, oh, decide on leaving only when you're ready to leave. Yeah, my statement wasn't about staying in the matrix. It wasn't. 
No, I know, but but to say the home is here, it it, it still indicates that it's it's um, it's uh, well, it's 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 not like it's in another place either, right? Like, I understand, I understand your point. It's not like it's in another place per se, but it it is because it's um, as long as the simulation is active, as um, we we are still tied to it that's the best way i can describe it and so the choices are either a stop the simulation un, 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 turn off the power end the simulation completely um and i think i think some humans in the past have tried to do that obviously they didn't work but i do <laughs> think that's been tried to to actually just pull the plug mm -hmm. the other way of course is to um we have to exit it individually one at a time which will of course drop the power into the simulation and make it harder and harder for it to run i get a sense that's what's going on now i'm going yeah. into detail i get a sense and we're seeing a, a giant hard. shift of power yeah a giant shift of the power of how this is being run and uh, the it's the simulation is making adjustments to try to change its power source yeah, and it's actually played out its game. And anybody that's pretty aware will see yeah. that it only has a few tools. It doesn't have, it can be very wicked about how it uses them, but there's only a few. And if, you know, I, I look out there and I'm going, we call it clown world. It's glitching. It makes no sense. Yeah. We're, we're, I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, you know. And even to the most maybe asleep people or it's got to be impacting them in some way. This is not the normal world that we were grown up in. Yeah. So we'll see. But it's a great opportunity. It's a it's a great opportunity for everyone because, again, if anyone recognizes it, I, I've said this a number of times in interviews, the divine spark has more power than the simulation. The, the, the simulation needs us to keep it running. We exactly. don't actually need the simulation. We have more power than it, but we have, as you said, right at the beginning, we got so distracted by the simulation. We've been so distracted by everything outside of ourselves, so focused on everything outside of ourselves, that we've given away the access. Not that we've given away the power. We haven't given away the spark. We've just given away our in, uh, our tuning to it. That's a good word, our tuning to it. And all we have to do is retune or you know, remember, retune, whatever you want to use. We're re, we're 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 just we're just reaccessing our own power. We're reaccessing our own our own totality. Once you do that, that's one step of being. Well, you can just say then you finally can make your choice. Then then you're at the point of real choice. Um, but until as long as everything's out there, it's we're still we're still losing the greatest power we have, which is ourself. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And, you know, that's all I can say to people is unplug, right? Watch how you're giving away your energy, right? And most people do it in good things. That's how I've seen it for a while. It's like attachment to family. Uh, all the things that our society has told us. And so in a very, very real way, we're still giving our energy to keeping the matrix going because we don't want to suffer loss. Yeah. And you know, it's all good. I don't know how long I've kept you on here. I think okay. we're about right at the one hour point. So we are right at the one hour point. I had to. Put yeah. My... This is perfect. Yeah. So, so you yeah, just, just, yeah, just so, just so people know I'm getting ready. I'm on, I'm taking a bit of a break now and um, I'm going to do some, some uh, personal work now and some uh, going away from talking and external stuff and doing more internal work for a few weeks. And so that's why I've also keeping the last few ones I have here up to an hour. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's time to, it's time for myself to stop going outward more and go inward and do some more work. So hopefully that's a reminder to others as well, that it's always make sure you take time to go inward. Yeah. And, you know, again, with on the band, the band of communication, I think a lot of us tap into the same thing at the same time. And that's my been my 
very deep. I mean, I'm being called to go really deep. And that's why I can't even, I just, for the last few days, I cannot, literally can't watch the screen. I can't. I, it happened to me with television back in the 80s. It was Babel. I couldn't watch it. So I think I need to take a break from this medium. And, uh, you know, and bless you, howdy. Like, it's good to do the inner work. And yeah. but you have a garden, don't you? You have a, you grow food? Well, eventually, once once the, once the snow is gone. So oh, right. there's, okay. there's nothing like that at this point. So okay. uh, now it's just, it's just going to be, yeah, true, actual inward stuff and um i haven't even i haven't even actually thought about it until like you know four or five more days when it will actually when it'll start and um yeah we'll go from there and uh, you i'll know. see i'll see you on the other side then yeah. <laughs> right yeah. we might Great. find each other out there it was really a pleasure and uh maybe we can do this again Thank when you. we come out of this this piece yeah, after we've had a bit of a, everyone's had a bit of a break and we see where the world is and what's going on, we reevaluate and start all over again. See what we do from there. Um, <laughs> okay, friend. Thanks for, uh, thanks, thanks for the visit to Mexico, even though, yeah. When are you going to come? I'm always inviting people. Well, yeah, well, if the world situation becomes somewhat normal again, then um, I've got a lot of the world to see. And oh, Mexico's on the list. There's, I haven't been there in over 20 years, and it would be great oh. to be back. And there's there's a lot of stuff I didn't get to the first time that I'd like to do again. So yeah. we will see. Well, I, I want to go back to Europe because I, I mean, it's like you're talking about when you stepped into the stone door. Like for me, when I was in Romania and I was in other places, <clears throat> the stones talk to me right? There's something so powerful about that communication. Again, remembering, it's all here. It's all here. If we okay. can hear it, it's okay. all here. So maybe you'll get here. We'll see. Okay, darling. Thanks okay. for the conversation. Yeah, you too. And uh, yeah, we will go from there and see what happens. And um, yeah, hopefully, maybe now when people get around the cafe, they'll have something else to, to talk about. Uh, they'll be confused about something else now. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh -huh.